If you have another translation that is quite all right, we're going to wind up on the same road because it is the Word of God. Amen. Ushers, you may be seated. Amen. Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 24. If you have it, say amen. amen. If not, say wait a minute. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had, and was no better but rather grew worse. Then she heard about Jesus. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the flow of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed from her afflictions. Right. May God have a blessing Amen. to the reading of his awesome word. Let right. me talk with you briefly with the aid of the Holy Spirit from the thought, I've got some issues. I've got some issues. Now, if I would say, by a show of hands, how many folk have some issues? Man, I tell you, I raise both hands, keep up both feet. Amen. Just work my ears. Do what I do because everybody in here got some problems. Now, if you're not having problems, uh, that means you haven't gone into the problem. Or uh, if you ain't have, are uh, you coming out of a problem? Right. But there are going to be some problems that are going to wait on us. Mm -hmm. And you can't have a testimony without going through a test. Right. And so as we look at our, our, our lesson here today, we start off in Mark chapter 5. And we see at the beginning of Mark chapter 5, we see that Jesus runs into a demoniac. Right. Yeah, man, that's, that was in the graveyard, uh -huh. cutting and, and, and gashing himself and howling, and, and no chains or, or shackles could hold him. Yes, but one day Jesus showed up on the scene. And when he showed up on the scene, this man came along and they had a conversation, and Jesus asked, the man, his name, and before he could answer, the demon said, we are legions, for we are many. Now, because we look up on the other hill and we see that there were some swine, there were some pigs on the other, other hill, we assume that there was 2,000 demons in this man. All right. But if we look up the word legion, we see that it, it accumulates from 3,000 to 6,000. Mm -hmm. And so, this man had at least 6,000 demons in him. Uh -huh. And so when Jesus got ready to rebuke the spirit, the demons had enough sense to say, don't cast me into the void, but we want to go piggyback right. Maybe he's what he made it in. And so, he blessed them to go into the pigs and the pigs had enough sense not to let them ride with them, so they drowned them, said. Uh, word got back to town that the pigs went overboard. All right. So the people came to see what had went on, and when they got there, they see that Jesus 
and the demoniac are sitting down having an awesome conversation. All right. But they tell Jesus to leave town. These folks cared more about ham and bacon. All right. Cared more about pig ears and pig tails. Yes, sir. Pig feet and crackling. Oh, they care more about pig skin and hog head cheese. They care more about size than they care about a man being healed. All right. So as Jesus gets ready to leave town, the man was in such, in, in, in such a condition, he was in such a right mind that he says, Lord, I want to go with you. Uh -huh. But the Lord says, no, go back home and tell your friends what God has done for you. Yes, sir. And so as they go over to the other side, they wind up back in Capernaum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 and here. We see that the last time that Jesus was in Capernaum, yeah, he was there and he wound up casting out unclean spirits. The last time he was there, he healed Peter's mother-in-law. Yeah, while he was the last time he was there, he healed many sick folk and cast out those who were demon possessed. Yeah, even the last time he was there at Capernaum there, he forgave and healed one that was paraplegic. Mm -hmm. But now when we get to this lesson, yes, sir. we see that here the word had got out that Jesus was back in Capernaum. Right. Yeah, yeah, the synagogue was a central place for those who wished it. And Jarvis, he was one of the lay persons that was elected to be one of the leaders. And Jarvis heard that, that, that uh, his, his position here was, was of high esteem in this town. But when he heard that Jesus was back in town, he fell down before Jesus and pleaded with him to come heal his daughter. Now, this was significant, and it was a daring act of respect and also wishing. Right. Now, now, we don't know the nature of this young girl's sickness. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there everything or nothing had helped this young lady. All right. And if she hadn't got help soon, she would die. But Jarvis remembered someone who could help, uh, someone who could touch uh, and had healed many people in Capernaum previously. Yes, sir. And so it was Jesus. Yes, Jarvis heard that Jesus had returned and, and he was among the crowd here on the seashore. Yeah, he asked Jesus, uh, just to touch his door. Knowing that if Jesus were to come with him, his daughter would leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can mess with us. You can mess with, with, with everything that we own, but don't mess with the children. Yeah, we'll go to the end of the earth to make sure that our children are all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Jesus went with him. And this curious crowd followed along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this crowd that pressed on Jesus, there was another person in need of a divine healing. There was another person that was in this crowd that needed some divine help. Yeah, one that had some issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we would look at this, this lesson here today, let's pinpoint the issues that she had. All right. Yeah, number one, uh, uh, she was had a description of her disease. Uh -huh. Yeah, what, uh, for 12 long years, she had suffered from eternal bleeding. Right. Yeah, this hemorrhage caused this woman to be in a constant condition of rich 
ritual uncleanness. She couldn't worship in the synagogue. She couldn't have a normal relationship with others. Yeah, her bed, her clothes, her furniture, anything and anyone that came in contact with her uh, would become unclean. This woman was treated uh, almost as severely as a leper. She had suffered and went without the basic necessities of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she went without these necessities because she was trying to find a cure. Secondly, she had suffered greatly at the hands of doctors through the years. She had spent everything that she had to pay them. Yes, and while she was looking for this cure, you know the doctors ain't too, ain't too far from that now. They're practicing medicine. They listen to your symptoms. Don't get me wrong. They got some knowledge. But then they've got some representatives that come in and they are experimenting on different types of drugs. And they'll tell the doctors that if you get so many people on this drug, you will get this amount of money back. And so they don't know whether or not it's going to help you or hurt you. But they will put you on the medicine and they will sit back to watch the results. Yeah. Me and my wife was watching television the other day and you know they got all these different commercials that come on and, and we were looking at the commercials and the results and the, and the side effects were worse than the results. I said, Lord, I don't know which one I would take. I think I just suffered through the symptoms. Yeah, because the, 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 the effects, you got diarrhea. Heart get to beat fast. Your, 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 your vision gets blurred. You get dizziness. You can't go too many places. And the, uh, the side effects are you get high blood pressure. Yeah, man, it can affect your kidneys. And that's the side effects. Whew. Take this medicine. You can't go nowhere. Jump in the car. You got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but these doctors will put you on the medicine. Not knowing what's going to happen. But this woman had another issue. She, she not only had, had a trail of no, your disease, not only had she paid everything that she had to get cured from all these doctors, but her third issue is that she didn't get any better. But she grew worse. Yeah, her condition had gradually declined. And I can imagine these doctors just said, your next appointment yes, is such and such a day. Right. Oh, man. This woman had some issues. There was no hope for a suffering. No hope for her, 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 her material resources. No hope uh, for her problem until she heard about Jesus. Right. Yes, this woman had determined uh, in her mind that she was going to work her way through the crowd to touch Jesus' clothes. Now, believing in her heart that she was about to be healed. Yeah, yeah now, 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 this, this decision didn't come upon her own. But this decision to touch Jesus' garment was due to the popular belief 
that the clothes of a holy man imparted spiritual and healing power. Yeah, and she may, uh, may have feared that, that Jesus wouldn't touch her. Yeah, if he knew her condition. Yeah, she may have feared that uh, if, the, if her disease had became known, Yes, to this crowd uh, that she had touched, uh, that they would get angry because they were unclean. Right. She uh, thought that she would just get healed and go away. Mm -hmm. She thought that she could get healed and disappear. Mm -hmm. She thought she could touch the hill of Jesus' garment, and that would be all that was written. Yes, but the moment yeah. that she touched Jesus' is gone. The liver came. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, because the how do you know, Reverend, that deliverance came? Uh -huh. Because her bleeding stopped. Yeah. yeah, the disease that had weakened her body for years had suddenly disappeared. Yes, she felt the difference. And knew not only that the pain had stopped, but she knew that she was completely healed from her disease. Yes, what a moment of incredible joy. Yes, this must have been when the woman realized that she was healed. Yes, yes uh, sometimes we feel that our problems will keep us away from God. Sometimes we think that our problems are so big that God won't be able to handle them. Yes, sometimes uh, oh, we realize that sometimes our, our problems get too big for us. And we think that we can handle them all by ourselves. But Jesus is waiting to help us along the way. We don't have to wrestle with this problem. We don't have to wrestle with our issues. But all we got to do is turn them over to an awesome God. Yeah, don't let your fears keep you away from Jesus. Oh, because Jesus is waiting and he cares about us. Yeah, is there anybody in here today that's got some issues and some problems that you can't handle? Is there anybody in here today that know that your problems are whooping the hell out of you? Yeah. Is there anybody in here today that's sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yeah, I want to recommend a man called Jesus. He's able to take care of your problems. All you got to do is touch the heal of the spirits of God. He'll make you whole. Yes, he will. Oh, the more I think about Jesus and all he's done for us, I know he's able. I've got some issues. Yes, I do. Sometimes I think that because a person is called a preacher, Sometimes you think because he got pastor in front of his name that he don't have any issues. But I got some issues just like you got some issues. Yeah, every now and then I got to deal with some people family members. Yeah, every now and then I got to deal with some phony friends and real enemies.
someone right in this place today that's going through some issues that is whooping the hell out of you. Now, why don't you meet Jesus, the problem solver? Why don't you meet Jesus, the mind regulator? Why don't you meet Jesus, the heart fixer? Why don't you meet Jesus, the one that will take you in your arms and rock you like a baby? And no matter how many issues you have, you can sleep at night because he is in control. This is where we should open the doors of the church and say that you can join this family or any family by baptism, Christian experience, or by letter. But Jesus opened the doors over 2,000 years ago. And I want you to meet him. I want him to be your Lord and your Savior. I don't want you to scratch your hair out, but I want you to be able to meet a man that is a problem solver. I want you to meet a man that will make your burdens light. I'm not going to tell you that your, your days are going to be a bed of roses. I'm not going to tell you that you ain't going to run into some problems. I'm not going to tell you that you ain't going to run into some issues. You're going to run into some issues. You're going to run into some problems. You're going to run into some things that want you to back up and give out on God. But if you keep your eyes focused on God, he done already worked it out. All he wants you to do is give it over to him. And when we give our issues over to God, I guarantee you, without the shadow of a doubt, he'll work them out right before your eyes. Why don't you try him? Why don't you come?